Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create procedural puddles uh, that can go on top of either a procedurally generated concrete texture or a texture that you've imported uh, from elsewhere. So I've got a pretty much fresh scene here. I've got some objects hidden which I'll add in later. Uh, the one thing I am going to bring in now is this plane because I want it the same size as the one I did before. So it's 23.6 to 8. Um, by 23.628 if you want to follow the exact way that I am doing it. So the first thing that we're going to do is jump into the Hypershade Editor and we're going to create a Redshift Material Blender. So we just hit the tab and type Matte and we'll get the Material Blender there. And then we need to create two Redshift Materials and we'll delete the um, shading group from each of those so that first one's gone and then I'll just control D to duplicate that second one. We'll rename these. Um, first one can be called Asphalt and the second one can be called Puddle. And the alt color from the asphalt goes into the base color, and the alt color from the puddles goes into the layer one color. And we're just going to have the layer one color set to uh, blend mode set to black, which means off value of zero, uh, while we set up the asphalt. So we're just going to bring in a file. Now, if you want to use a if you want to use a noise generator to create your concrete, you can do that. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use a texture that I downloaded. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description to where I got it from. Um, so in that file node, we're just going to open up our road texture. And because I know this one's kind of big, I'm just going to repeat the UV times two. Um, so that will make the UVs, uh, sorry, that'll make the texture a little bit smaller over the, over the plane. Um, and then we will assign our material blender to our plane and run an IPR and there we go. Now we don't have any lights in the scene so we'll create a light. We're just going to use a dome light for this. I'd recommend using a dome light with an HDRI for making your puddles. It will first start as make it look a lot nicer and secondly make it a bit easier um, to see the difference between the puddles and the surface of the road while you're rendering this. Um, Alright, so back into the asphalt. We're just going to make the um, reflection probably 0.05 and quite dark because we don't want very much reflection. And the weight is going to be 1.0 we also need to create a bump map. I don't have a bump map for this texture, so what I'm going to do is just run the um, color out color from the from our uh, road texture into it, and run that into our bump input. Not the best way of doing it, but uh, because I don't have a map set up, and because I'm not going to just create a black and white one just for the sake of it. Um, We'll just go with that. So if I IPR that, so you can see the bump map actually does make a bit of a difference. Just a little bit, obviously a little bit less flat. And because we've got some specularity on it now, it's going to pick up those highlights a bit nicer. Um, and also because we're going to be using puddles, it's good to use a bump map because you'll get the flat surface of the puddles contrasting against the uh, bumped surface of the asphalt. Okay, next we're going to create a fractal. Um, and that's going to drive our puddle. So just tab and grab a fractal texture. Color is going to go into your blend color um, because this is also going to be work as a, a mask uh, for our puddle. And while we work on this, we're just going to put the diffuse color of the fractal into the diffuse color of our puddle. And actually, we'll just increase this to white. So while we render it, we can just see how big those puddles are going to be. So at the moment they're a little bit on the small side. So I'll just keep the render running um, and go to the fractal. And what I want is some good contrast between the black and the white areas. And then I just want the white areas to be, or the black areas to be a bit bigger as well. 
as well as a little bit of transition. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, we can also increase the uh, how much that's spread across there by decreasing the UV spread to 0.5. So now we get puddles that are twice as big, and I think that's probably going to do it. Just want to change that bias a bit lower. So we'll run that color into our blend color, and we can take that off the diffuse color for now. Make sure that's all. Yep, change the diffuse color on the puddles to black. And there you go, you got some puddles already happening there. Don't get too excited though, because we can actually do quite a bit more to make these look even more realistic. So at the moment you can see that you can't actually see the road through the um, puddle. Uh, it's completely occluding it. So we want to be able to see that transition um, a little bit better where those lines should be visible because these puddles aren't very deep. Um, if you wanted to make them murky, obviously, then maybe they wouldn't be able to see. Th you wouldn't be able to see through it. Uh, but we can uh, just uh, we can add a couple of things in here, there just to make it so they're a little bit appear a little bit more translucent. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is drive our texture from our road into the diffuse of our puddle. And we're going to do that and we're going to multiply it times another color so we get the road texture But it's going to be tinted so we'll make it look like the, um, the puddles have actually picked up a bit of tint In this case, I want them to look a little bit dirty. So I'm going to use like a desaturated brown color So we're going to use a multiply uh, Multiply divide and we're going to run the um, RGB out color from the road into there and then we're just going to use a ramp run that color into the input there and delete the white change that black color to be a sort of desaturated brown it looks like that so you get a preview there so all the areas that are underwater will look like that um, I might make it even a bit more desaturated something like that and then run that output into the diffuse of the puddles. So now if we compare them, you can see those lines through there, and that's without the lines. It does make quite a bit of difference to be able to just see those there. And if you want to further change that while the render is going, we can just go into our puddles material, go back into the fuse and go into the input 2 which was the ramp and then you can mess around with your color the more obviously the whiter it is or lighter it is um, the more it's going to make your poles appear like they're clean and completely transparent and then the darker it is um, the more it's going to look like it's occluded uh, it's more like murky now if you wanted to rough your puddles up a little bit, um, that would probably be a good idea because you don't want them to be pristine. So a little bit of roughness, like 0.05, will probably do it. And then we can also, in our um, ramp texture, we can combine that with a noise node. Uh, texture. And we will multiply those colors by each other as well. So I just want a high frequency noise color, uh, a high frequency noise. So increase the ratio, increase the frequency ratio, um, the depth, something like that. And run that output into where the ramp previously was going. And then now, It will just create a little bit of a variation in the color of uh, the road. So instead of just being able to see through that very easily, you're going to be able to um, notice a little bit of difference. It's actually hard to tell in this render at the moment, but um, if you try it, you'll trust me, you'll see the difference. It's definitely there. I might actually add in a bit more bump though to that uh, road. Okay, cool. So it's just making that transition between the water, which is flat, and the road. A little bit more obvious and depending on your angle obviously it's gonna look like there's a little bit more water so um, you just have to develop that um, depending on what sort of look you're going for and whether or not you want those water puddles to be totally transparent and also how specular you want your road so if we jump back into the asphalt 
and increase the color of the specularity or make the, the areas that aren't puddles look a little bit um, more wet which is kind of what you want okay so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how these puddles are behaving until you put some um, objects in so we're just going to bring in a car okay so my first impression is that the um, well actually the IOR is wrong on the on these so we just need to change the index of refraction on the water 1.33 and I'm going to make that a little bit more blurry just by increasing the roughness a bit and then if you want to lower the, uh, the darkness of the puddles you can do that as well um, probably somewhere above 50% grey to make it look realistic obviously white would be the most realistic um, but obviously it's a computer generated image so you can do whatever the heck you want um, so somewhere like that is kind of what I like and uh, as well just make sure that your objects that you're putting on top of the water are specular as in they've gotten wet because I'm assuming assuming they've been outside in the rain uh, like the um, like the pavement has been um, also if you're finding that you aren't getting a good transition between your uh, puddles like too reflective and too opaque uh, or reflective um, you can actually go in and just adjust the darkness or lightness of the ramp color um, that will probably help you out a lot as well because essentially this is acting as your um, specular color as you can see so it'll be acting mostly well it'll be acting completely on its value rather than its saturation the saturation is just going to control the color of the puddle itself okay and uh, one final thing we can do to control the size of our puddles uh, which I forgot to add in before we can just create a remap value node and we can plug that in between our fractal and our blend color so the we we're just going to use the alpha in this case from the fractal into the input value and then the output value we're going to have to uh, in, uh, we're going to have to expand out your blend color and just run the out value into the R, G and B inputs there so now looking at your render um, we can just adjust this ramp here to dry up the puddles from the left to the right hand side uh, if you adjust the right hand side down you can see it changes the um, visibility of them and then on the left hand side if you bring that all the way up you can increase the size of the puddles so it kind of works like a little clamping uh, mechanism and then yeah and then you get something that looks like that which can really make your images pop a lot um, I'm working on a sci-fi scene here at the moment with this car which um, as you can see is really improved by having uh, just a little bit of um, puddles in there to reflect all the lights makes everything look quite cool uh, that's it for this tutorial though hopefully you enjoyed it and you found it useful uh, if you did like it make sure you click the like button so other people can find it and um, if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed as I do uh, tutorial basically every week I'll probably be increasing that um, quantity soon I think and um, so yeah uh, make sure you stick around for those I do uh, redshift and other tutorials as well uh, if you'd like to find more of my work check out my Instagram and Facebook link in the description for those that's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering